Hi, my name is Jeff McAndrew. I'm a sales director at Pika Energy. Today we're going to take a look at how to install and calibrate a set of current transformers on the Pika Energy Island system. The required tools are current transformers, either the Pika CT kit or approved third party units, a 5 in 1 screwdriver, the Cat5 cable long enough to run from the CT location back to the inverter, or tools to make and test Cat5 cable, and small wire nuts, which are optional. Current transformers, or CTs, unlock some powerful capability by enabling a Pika Islanding inverter to sense grid current. CTs are required equipment for self-supply, zero export, and demand management applications. By sensing grid current, a Pika Islanding inverter can determine how much energy your home is using. It uses this information to match demand with energy from the solar array and the Pika Smart Battery. Today we're going to be using the Pika Energy Island CT Accessory Kit, which includes two 100 amp CTs for 200 amp service, as well as a breakout adapter and an installation guide. Anytime you're working inside of a main service panel, make sure to follow proper safety procedures. Remember to always install the CTs on the main entrance conductors, line one and line two coming into the main panel, not on the inverter output into the 40 amp breaker. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is open up this CT and then I'm gonna put this around my first conductor. Now you need to make sure that the CT snaps shut. If the CT is not fully closed, it will not calibrate on the inverter. Because this is a split phase installation, we have two CTs to install. So I'm going to install the second CT, same as the first, around the second conductor. The next step is to connect the leads of the CTs into the breakout adapter. This is our CT breakout adapter. I'm gonna connect the positive and negative lead of CT1 to the middle two slots. In order to connect the leads to the breakout adapter, you'll need to push in the terminal blocks, insert the leads, and release. Always test your leads by pulling on them very gently to see if they're fully connected. In this case, I'm confident that the leads are fully connected to the correct positive and negative inputs. The next step is to connect a patch cable between the adapter output and the CT input on the inverter. Connect the other end of the Cat5 cable to the CT port in the inverter. The CT input jack is a double stacked RJ45 jack. You may use either the top or the bottom jack. Do not connect CTs to the ethernet jack. Make sure not to connect CTs to the network jack and do not attempt to connect the ethernet to the CT input jack. Use the diagram within section four of your manual for this procedure. Other installation scenarios will have other requirements. For larger service conductors, you will need a larger CT. Make sure to order the correct size CT for your application. Make sure to check both the current rating and the internal aperture size. Three-phase installations will require one more than what comes in PICA's CT kit. Make sure to order the correct quantity of CTs for your project. The CTK2-01 kit comes with two 100 amp CTs and a breakout adapter. The CT301 kit comes with one 300 amp CT and one breakout adapter. And the CT601 kit comes with one 600 amp CT and one breakout adapter. Many installations make use of a supply side connection or a line side tap. In those scenarios, it's important to put the CTs on the supply side of the tap point. If your installation uses an external transfer switch controlled by a PICA automatic transfer switch kit, or ATSK, connect the CT leads to the green CT terminal block on the ATSK rather than directly to the inverter. Then use an ordinary Cat5 patch cable in a straight through configuration to connect the ATSK to the CT input jack in the inverter. Again, do not use a crossover cable. 
Locate the CTs on the line side of the transfer switch. You may put them in the same enclosure, but make sure to put them above the switch mechanism itself. You may choose to source your CTs separately rather than purchasing one of our kits. Make sure you purchase the right CT. Many CTs are not compatible with PICA equipment. The part numbers must match exactly. If you are adding CTs to an older X7601 islanding inverter, CTs can be connected directly to the screw type CT input terminals in the wiring compartment. First, we'll use the rapid shutdown button in order to disable all of the devices connected to this inverter's rebus. Now we're going to shut off the 40 amp breaker that the inverter is connected to in order to make sure that there's no power flowing between the main panel and the system. If you have a protected loads panel installed, be aware that the protected loads will lose power during this procedure. Now in order to finish the power cycle, we're going to turn the 40 amp back feed breaker back into the on position. This will send grid voltage back to the inverter. In order to return to normal operation, we're going to hold the center button, resume operation, confirm. System shutdown has now been canceled. So the first thing that I'm going to do is re-enable my inverter and this will bring up the current transformers. You can see that I'm showing a utility pole. My system is now following how much power the house is consuming and pulling from the utility grid. Now that our inverter is re-enabled, let's go through and enable each of our Rebus devices. As you enable the PV link optimizers, you'll see them connecting input and shortly thereafter making power. Now that all of our Rebus devices are enabled and we're making power, we now have access to our self-supply mode, which will match consumption of the house with supply from the PV. Thank you for joining us for this CT installation video. If you have any questions, please visit our website at pica-energy.com.